everybody, and welcome wherever you might be right around Australia. All thanks to LD Mobile. This is NBL Overtime. Hashtag NBL Overtime to get involved. We are into the last week of the regular season. Mike Kelly is out of the Cairns Taipans. We'll get to that. There is so much going on. Top 10 plays. That's a nice jumper. Corey Homicide Williams in the house. How you doing? I'm good, man. It's an oldie but goodie. That's all right. Okay, I like it. Studs and duds, of course. Liam Sandham Ray. It's always tough when there's so many games, so many different things changing almost by the second with the situation in Victoria. We don't uh, ask too much of you, but we want studs and duds. <laughs> NBL.com.au and the NBL app. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, shout out to everyone in lockdown across Victoria. Ah! Um, uh... <laughs> And, uh, oh, my God, it is all happening it is. in the NBL right now. Big, big game tonight. Oh, Well, you know what? Brian Gorgian, we spoke about this in the offseason. We spoke about the fact that Brian Gorgian does not miss the semifinals. And then for a lot of the year, we thought, you know what? He's going to miss the semifinals. Well, the moment we're out of here, we're going to see, I think, Brian Gorgian make the semifinals. It is all happening. Only moments away. This is a big one. It kickstarts what's going to be incredible last week. I'm going to start with you, Homicide, because you have been on this Hawks bandwagon for a little while, so you expect them to deal with the Wildcats in two hours' time. Yeah, I do. This is a huge game for that organization, for the coach, and for that team. I mean, think about it. Last year, five wins. Mm -hmm. Tough year. Cleaned house, new staff, New energy, brought in some talented players, and um, they're right on the brink of punching their ticket into the finals, I believe. You know why I believe? Go on. Tyler Harvey. There's no way you are on the brink of punching your ticket. You're at home. Everything is set. Yeah, you're not playing Cairns. Yeah, you're not playing Adelaide. But if you are to be a serious contender in entering finals and getting into the finals, you have to win today. There's no Bryce Cotton. You're at home. You're in a good groove. You're in a great groove. You might be playing your best basketball right now, to be honest with you, in terms of wins and performance, and especially with Tyler Harvey, okay? This is why he's in the conversation for MVP, no. right? Let me just, let, let's just talk about this, okay. right? Dang Adele's not there. Cam Barstow's not there. There is an inconsistent, which he is, Justinian Jessup, he's hot and cold. We don't know what he's going to get, what he's going to give you on any given night. You can't pencil in 20 and a win. Five threes made. Four. You can't do that. You have a young cast of Australians on his team as locals. There's no way on paper you would think that team is there. You know why they're in that position? Not only Brian Gorgian, but that man right there is leading them. That's why. Two weeks ago, before Bryce Cotton got hurt, what did you right. say about the Wildcats? Pencil them in. What do you say about them now? I don't believe that they will get to win the championship without Bryce Cotton. Look, Tyler Harvey, That's his last two games. I agree. I, I, 30 points, mm -hmm. eight rebounds, four assists, mm -hmm. five steals in New Zealand when everybody was like, they're going to win all their games in New Zealand, right? They went down there, got it done. Back, and, and backed it up versus Adelaide, 23, 6, and 5. I have no reason and no doubt to believe this game tonight in two hours. Tyler Harvey's going to punch that ticket. I agree. Don't think he's MVP. I think that's definitely Cotton. I just said it's a conversation. Fair. I had the Bullets. Cotton's the best player in the land. A month ago, I had the Bullets making it. They've let me down. You had the Kings. You also have been on the Phoenix bandwagon, but they laid an egg last Friday night in the last 10 minutes. Well, who have you got making it? <laughs> I'm just going to stick with the Kings. Okay. For now, my head tells me Illawarra mm -hmm. because they're in the box seat there. I, I think South East Melbourne will get one of these wins over the at least one over this last round. They've got a tough schedule. But um, what I love is the fact that we're right at the beginning of the final round of the season and six teams can still make the finals. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. We love that. Brisbane is still daring to dream the dream. They're, they're still getting some results. That was a big win in New Zealand. They need a whole bunch of things to go their way. And it's very, very, very unlikely. Look at their percentage. But... The, if the Wildcats win in, in Wollongong tonight, then it, it's all going to come down really to that Sydney Illawarra game. And it, it also sets up that top of the table clash with Melbourne United for the regular season title. So there is so much on the line in this game tonight. And Corey is, is absolutely 100% bang on that Tyler Harvey is in the MVP conversation. Mm -hmm. You can have, we can all have differing opinions about who should get it. I still think Bryce Cotton is that man, but there is 100%. He's 100% right that he's in the conversation because he's been amazing. And to me, and we'll get to Illawarra a little bit more in a minute, but he has just continued to be himself. He's been unbelievable all year long. It's been the, the increased production and, and play of everyone around him. 
um, over the last three or four weeks, I think that's made the biggest difference. Sam Froling has to be most improved player. He's been absolutely unbelievable. And then all those other guys, Deng Deng and Emmett Nara and Isaac White, all of a sudden they are more than just Tyler Harvey. And that's been amazing for them. Hashtag NBL21 to get involved. Look, if the Wildcats win tonight, we've got a wildcard game. Saturday night, we got a wild card game. One that I pushed for two years ago. I understand the situation where we need to get... Ga I understand all of that. But we are going to have a wild card game. The Sydney Kings taking on the Illawarra Hawks on Saturday night. And it could be the most watched NBL game of the year. Like, legitimately the most watched NBL game of the year. I cannot wait. I think Illawarra wins tonight and ruin that. And it'll also ruin Friday night at RAC Arena. But the best thing for people, non-Illawarra, fans right now is the Wildcats to win tonight. Friday night goes to a whole new level because you're playing for a minor championship and home court advantage if they get to a grand final and instead they know it'll be a wildcard game. No, you're bang on. And I'm in lockdown and I can't <laughs> leave the house so I'm wrapped, which I don't leave the house anyway. But doesn't it also, <laughs> doesn't it also potentially set it up if the Wildcats win tonight? That's the first um, domino to fall for the Br Brisbane Bullets' Stephen Bradbury job to the finish line yep. here, right? Because if, if the Wildcats win, but Sydney beat Illawarra, Brisbane continue to beat South East Melbourne, they go over to New Zealand and lose, all of a sudden the Bullets see this path to the finals. It's an unbelievable situation. It is. Wherever you might be around the country, don't go anywhere. Hashtag NBL21 to get Hashtag involved. Hashtag expect the unexpected. We should shorten that. Like hashtag... ETE. There you go. Bang. Done it beautifully. Hey, let's talk about Saturday night. No, talking great games. Uh, it, it, it's ETU. Yeah, uh, this ETU. Yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you sold like so Charles, well. I, just, like, I felt like I just had a Charles Barkley uh, moment. No, no, I'm with you. Guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's talk. You, you went along with it. Oh, well, mate, because... You went along with it. He you can't sold, spell any better than he can. He sold it so well. I just dived in like Greg Leganis. I trust. I trust on the side. There's my first mistake, maybe. <laughs> hey, let's get to Saturday night because uh, United and Sydney Kings, this, and this always happens late in the year because you have a situation where, you know, the intensity just goes up. And when Sydney's season is right there on the cusp of being bust, if any lust they have, and it just had everything double <laughs> overtime and it had Sean Bruce, who was outstanding late. Craig Moller, brilliant. There's Daniel Kicker going bang. That was in the out in the first half. This is the game that had it all. And this just whets the appetite for the finals, I think. Classic game. One of the best of the year. Really gutsy performance by the Sydney Kings. Some of the big names had some moments in terms of Ware and Martin and Xavier Cooks. But really, it was the supporting cast. It, with their entire season on the line, Sean Bruce... Craig Moller and Tom Vodanovic in particular came up enormously. Sean Bruce was sensational. Yes, he took a bunch of shots, but he needed to, the way Casper Ware was being defended by Shaley and the like. And uh, he came up really, really large. Um, and this was, a, this was a huge performance. I, uh, my man here, Corey's letting me off the hook a little bit because nothing that I thought was going to happen in round 20 ended up happening. I thought Melbourne would win this, but I thought Sydney would get the win in Perth. It flipped the other way. They did manage to split their weekend and keep their season alive. Hashtag ETE. <laughs> it was a wonderful game. <laughs> I, you know what I do like? I do like, I'm going to give a shout out to Sean Bruce, who was brilliant. I did tweet. I'm not, a big on the, I'm not big on the possession arrows, has always been the case, and I felt that on, on Saturday night it would have added to the drama late with the jump ball, but uh, Sean Bruce hit me up and said, keep it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out Brucey, who was brilliant on Saturday night in that big win. And the Sydney Kings, we've spoken so much about them, of course, the Adam Ford and the coaching situation, they're, they're going to have a different coach next year. All of that thrown into the mix, they've been brilliant late in the year and that was no exception. Shout out to Adam Ford. I love the way he goes about his business, period. I love, look. I'm, a, I'm an underdog myself, so I'm always on the bandwagons of underdogs, getting opportunities and making the most of it. Sean Bruce, like you said, it was great. But Donovich, great. Underdog. Craig Muller, great. Cooks coming in, you know, late. Just great to see him playing and caught a mean body. Great alley-oop pass from Casper. And, of course, the body count continues to climb. But um, Only one person doesn't like that, and I dare say that's Mitch McCarron. You know what? Mason Peatland. Mason Peatland. Mason Peatland. Mason Pe of course Peatland. it's always Mason Peatland, but shout out to Peatland. I love Mason Peatland because you are a competitor. You play hard. You block a lot of shots, but you get dunked on a lot, and that's what happens when people rim protect and contest a lot of shots. So shout out to you. But anyway, I just sit back and just think about 
what the Kings would have been mm -hmm. had they have not had all of these injuries. And with the situation that they're in and how they've been able to play, they're still in a good seat. They're still in a good seat mm, to potentially wow. punch for that fourth spot. This is a huge game coming up against Illawarra Perth. So if, as much as I'm talking Illawarra, Illawarra, Perth can win that game, mm -hmm. which sets up that last game between Illawar and Sydney. There's, so. there's, some, there's some irony in this situation for it's the Sydney crazy, Kings, man. right? Like, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you look up the top deck of, of the uh, Win Entertainment Centre tonight. Maybe the Kings might be up there shouting and cheering for the Perth Wildcats <laughs> because Corey doesn't think Perth Sydney's a rivalry, but tonight they are well and truly cheering for the Cats. What's going on with South East Melbourne, man? Uh, like, they have been in. Really good form. We spoke about them last week. We're like, you don't want to play them in a playoff. They're going to finish third. That's why you want to finish on top. They go to Cairns. They have complete control of this game. And then they lay an egg in a 10-minute stretch. Mirko Djeric was outstanding in the last few minutes. And essentially, now find themselves not only not in third anymore, yeah. but having to go to New Zealand and then play maybe and possibly a very desperate Brisbane Bullets a couple of times. Yeah. Talk to me here. Who well, has a massive letdown wasn't it? I mean, it was a tough situation. They, they have to give up a home game and it doesn't go to a neutral venue like happened for Melbourne United. No, it goes to their opponent's home venue. Mm. So down the stretch, Mirko Jarrett catches fire. He's kissing, blowing kisses <laughs> to his home <laughs> crowd and things go pear-shaped for the Phoenix. But I said it on the call, they, they became a different team to what they've been all year. Um, they, they just fell into the trap of becoming an isolation team mm -hmm. in the block. They thought they had mismatches against this undersized Cairns team down the stretch, and then Mirko Jarek turned back the clock, went Townsville Croc style against Old Adelaide <laughs> with Sean Dennis at the helm and Omar Samhan finding him on the perimeter, and he made it rain and got them over the line. Big, big letdown for the Phoenix, and... Um, they'll be kicking themselves because mm. they could pretty much be locked in and have the pole position for third spot right now. And now they're relying on the Hawks to stumble in the final round. You got anything? All right. Cairns were beaten fairly comfortably last night by Melbourne United. They had their press conference. Mike Kelly didn't mention anything. I did, one of the com did notice one of the commentators might have alluded to a bit of news possibly going to come out of the contest. Big shout out Liam Santa Maria. But in the end of it, the announcer was made that Mike Kelly... Uh, will not be the coach of the Cairns Taipans next year. He still had a year to go on his contract. The board decided that he's still the reigning coach of the year, of course, winning mm -hmm. it uh, just over 12 months ago in NBL 20. But Mike Kelly is out as coach of the Cairns Taipans. Olga Newlick there reporting that. Also, in a couple of tweets, mentioned that Adam Ford is the front runner. I'm going to start with you, Liam. What did you make of it? What do you know of it? And uh, how do you expect it to play out from here? In fact, you want to go first. OK, <laughs> I like this, Corey. Well... Here's the thing about sport, as we know, professional sports. It's performance-based. Wooden spoon, a game away from the grand finals, wooden spoon. That's not going to get it done. Yes, there's injuries, but injuries are a part. Felt that he lost his team. He lost the team. He lost the trust of the teammates, of, the, of his teammates, and that's unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. And when this happens... Unless you have championships next to your name as a coach, heads get the role, and it's usually the coach. It is what it is. Yeah, I think the writing was on the wall for this mid-season, wasn't it? I mean, we were sitting here at, this, at the desk talking that, about that team being being disconnected. You know, that, you're right. It, it lost the locker room, and, and they weren't... There was there was problems there with Mojave King, how that was getting worked out. That there was He wasn't getting the best out of... Cam Oliver. Now, some of that's on Space Cam, some of that's on 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 Coach Kelly. Um, and it felt like that he was a little less connected with Scott Machado this year than he was last year for whatever reason. That he didn't that didn't seem like the coach's extension on the floor like it did previously. And as a result, that team vastly underperformed. Now you're right, injury is massive, right? Kortnoy and Majuk Deng, they didn't they don't have the depth of talent that some of these other teams have to be able to cover for those kinds of of outs, um, so that impacted as well. But you're right. I mean, it's a what have you done for me lately business. That's why. I mean, who, why would you want to be? Why would you want to be a coach in a professional sporting realm? Because this is the kind of thing that happens. You're right. He's the reigning coach of the year, and yet he's gone. But um, 
it's uh, like we said, the writing was on the wall mid-season, and, and, and that's it for him in camp. Now you mentioned Mojave King, and of course, in the pre-season he was aggressive. We spoke about him on this panel about how we can't wait to see him and Josh Giddy go at it. In the end, Josh Giddy was was now going to be a lottery pick, and Mojave King, although his last couple of weeks with more opportunity, has been a lot better. Now the talk was, does he need new home? Does he need new coach? Of course, into the second year of his next star uh, contract, will that change now? Do you think? the Mojave King will be the Cairns Taipans, or do you think he will now look for a fresh start now that Mike Kelly's no longer there? Here's what I believe with this Next Star initiative, what needs to happen when signing them. They need to have an understanding from the organization that they are going to be supported and they're going to play minutes. Mm. If not, don't bring them in there because these are kids that are potential one and done kids. NBA scouts, they're on the radar or they're projected draft picks, either first or second round. So if you are not going to support that, do not bring them on the team. That's just how I see it. I saw, look, I'm not in there every day, but I knew what I saw in preseason with the, with the numbers mm. and the field goal percentage. So if you trusted him in preseason and he showed promise, why were you not trusting him as much as you were in the preseason? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't play the kid because all you did was hurt him more than help him. And that's just, that's just my thing. Don't take the kid if you're not going to play him. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree. You, you, everyone needs to be on board and on the same page, right? The, the kid, their representatives, the, the, the organization from an ownership and a GM level, the head coach, everybody needs to know. The kid, these next stars, if they're a top prospect, they have to play. You gotta play them. And, and otherwise, don't, don't bring them in. Don't bring them in. And, and you in dead last place. And so with you not playing him, not only do you hurt him, sorry, not only do you hurt him, you ain't winning anyway. Yeah. But you, you need to be ready and willing to grow through the pains, the growing pains, with him on the floor. Playing, that's what they did in Adelaide this year, and, and, and it worked out really well. Uh, and if you don't want to be that team, if you want to be the Perth Wildcats and say, look, uh, we, don't want it to, we don't want to do that. We're all about winning the championship. Don't I take don't, a next star. Don't take a next Don't do it. So, but it's going to be a different coach. It, it will and be. If, and if, the, if you can get that new coach and the entire organisation on that same page, then maybe there's no need for him to move elsewhere. Um, but... That's going to need to happen in that process. Well, I, I agree. I think he'll be in the NBL. Are, are you, he'll be in the NBL. I think so. Shit, he ain't got no choice. <laughs> got to add value well, what and I'll, move and, and, and have somebody else believe in you and play you. I agree. What I would just play slightly, very slightly devil's advocate, and because I agree with most of what you're saying, like, Mike Kelly is seeing him every day in practice. Okay, so I don't know what changed from pre-season to early in the regular season where a lot of us thought Cairns were going to be good, Cam Oliver was still there and it was a much different situation than we are right now. So I agree, but something obviously changed because Mike Kelly said he... Day, well, you know, it wasn't just the day. practice, you could see it on the floor. We spoke about it on the call. He, the, the little things, right? He needed to learn how to do the little things that you need to do at this level to be on the floor. You need to sit down and guard your man. You need to be awake off the ball and, and in tune defensively so you, you, we're getting stops. You need to block out and don't give up offense. He wasn't doing those things early in the year, but he needed to grow through those things on the floor. But when, you're, when you are a team that goes into a season with championship aspirations, and this is probably back to your conversation saying, if you don't think you can play your kid, don't sign in the next Stars program. Correct. When they started this season, not just Cairns, everyone thought they were going to have a much better year than they did. Second half of the year, I totally understand, and we've seen him play a lot more in the last three or four weeks. But that's the thing that when we look at it from the outside looking in, Mike Kelly must have seen something that he's like, look, right now you've got to continue to work your backside off in practice and you earn your minutes more so than just... Yeah, but there was a period of time he became Terry Armstrong mm. and was I, not playing at all. He went too I'm far not saying he had to I start, yep. but the kid had to play a, 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 you know, a, a good chunk of minutes game in, game out. All right. Hang on. Is this a typo? <laughs> What's going on here? Have we got Sanders oh. listening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, give me a come on. Hour. No, well, come on, man. <laughs> Mate. Come on, man. Mate, you just can't change the segment, on. I, I tell you what... <laughs> Trevor Gleeson's post-game press conference are a must-listen week in, week out because yeah. he just has a way of saying things that's always very enjoyable. I really liked his scouting report or his explanation 
on how Luke Travers has developed this season. Check this out. Probably played the best game of his career and looks like he's just having the time of his life. What did you say to him before the game to, um, to, to get him playing that sort of style? Yeah, he's just, uh, he's like, uh, you know, it's, it's like, a, put it this way, it's like a plant. If you put a plant in a bowl, it only grows a certain way. But if you you put it outside and um, you feed it and water it, it's going to grow a lot bigger than it does in a in a, in a um, jar so, or a, a bowl. And he's just starting to, to learn how to play. He's certainly a talent, without a question. We just got to keep on encouraging to be aggressive. He's athleticism. I don't know what the hell Gleason just <laughs> said. Did you see Mitch Norton? <laughs> <laughs> Holding it in. He's trying to keep what, Holding it in. What, what, do you reckon, <laughs> what do you reckon the first thing Mitch said to Trev the moment they got out of that press conference? Nothing. Nice. Nothing. Oh, so where, no, were you, where were you going no. with that yeah. plant stuff? I understand the analogy you were trying, but boy, oh boy, for the first time maybe ever, Trev actually missed when it comes to trying to explain something perfectly. Uh, uh, what let, else you got? Let, it's Santa's listening. La last night in Sydney, Scotty Hobson had this to say. Where do you, where does your mindset go to that? This is the team we've got to beat, or is it just one game? Let's lock up this top spot. A little bit of both, I guess. Uh, but you know, it's another opponent, and we got to do what we do well, and that's just play great defense. And uh, we've been road warriors all season, to be honest with you. So we got to continue to keep that energy, uh, play great basketball, play within our, our strengths, and you know, and try to go out and get a win. Well, you're Man, you ain't been on the road all year. Road, road warriors. warriors. <laughs> Come on, fam. This man for serious. What? Is it for real? Come on, man. They're road being... Warriors. How many road games you had this <laughs> No, hang on. Hold on, Cam. Hang on. Why are there NBA Cup games against Illawarra was a road game? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, let had... me guess. Bendigo. I mean, they've had a good record. <laughs> Jesus. They've had a good this record <laughs> outside of Victoria, but they spent like two months in Melbourne. <laughs> Come on, man. And then, not only that... No, I like it. Hold on. The man doubled down. He did not. ...different from tonight as well. You go from playing in front of no fans tonight and you're going to have 10,000-plus screaming fans against you on, on Friday night. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, looking forward to the challenge. Um, you know they're going to be uh, amped up in there, but, you know, I'll take my guys and, and compete with them anywhere, man. We've been road warriors all season, and uh, we're going to continue that, that, that form and that energy and bring it to... Come on, Scotty. Come on, man. Nah, look. Come on, Scotty. <laughs> Santa's listening. Yo, yeah. he's counting Bendigo as the road. Well, you know, they're on their own now. But um, they do win home or away, so... Well, they... Come I on. Guess. I, I wouldn't have gone with Road Warriors. <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. Hey, just quickly, though. He is playing very well. Killing. He's very, 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 very nice form as it is right now. Okay, hashtag NBL21 to get involved. We just wrapped up a wonderful round, of course, Indigenous round, which is full of very special moments. ...of the Nyonga language group. We ask our ancestors to watch over everyone tonight, keep everyone safe, and take you home safely when this is completed. Pre-game ceremonies, as we're seeing a little bit of here, the inclusion of everybody, which our great game and sports right around Australia doing a really good job of right now. It, it is a wonderful round. And I'll start with the great Indigenous round moment. Oh, the uniforms are amazing. Mm -hmm. the, the designers of which we learn a lot about as commentators and viewers over the course of the weekend, they are great. And everyone's to be congratulated. It is an outstanding round that shows so much of what our great game can do to bring everyone together 
for the love of the ramble, and I think it's brilliant. I think that the clubs, and I've said this on commentary, and I similar with the heritage jerseys, I think the clubs should be allowed to roll out, let the NBL know, say, hey, a couple of weeks' time, we're going to wear Indigenous jerseys. The Indigenous rounds should still exist, absolutely. Make it bigger and better each and every year. But in round five next year, if the Brisbane Bullets want to roll out that great-looking Indigenous jersey against the New Zealand Breakers... Let him roll it out because I think it adds a little bit of flair and excitement and, for a start, a great jersey to the league. I agree. I loved it. I love every bit of it. Um, appreciating the, the tradition that came before us. So um, shout out to the NBL for bringing it to the forefront and doing it big. Mm -hmm. I felt that round. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, and I feel that you're right. You should wear your indigenous uniform whenever you want to. I enjoyed all the welcome to country ceremonies. They were terrific. I, I, what I would prefer is next year, I'd love it if every team had an element of Indigenous design on their jerseys, their full-time jerseys. Love it. As a way of paying homage to the traditional owners of the land. So, uh, great round all, all together. Great suggestions. And now let's count down the top 10 from the Indigenous round. Round 20 is done. Let's have some fun in Charity Mobile NBL top 10 at number 10. Scott Machado. Gets the steal, then uses his body as a shield. And for Mojave King, that leaves a wide open field. The young airborne juggernaut arriving from the top for a can slam at number 10. On to number nine, where it's Norton on the drive, but Mitch, please. Xavier Cook with a chase down that brings him to his knees. Two guys arrived from the sky, but it was Xavier there in time to deny, and that one gets him in at number nine. At eight, it's Doofelmeyer a tad loose with his handle at first, but then in a burst, he's Tad Doofel Dimer, slinging this thing down to Majok Dig. Tad makes the diagonal connection, and Majok arrives with the airborne dimension that gets in at number eight. We're up to number seven where Sam McDaniels using his knowledge of geometry to see Mason Peetling open for a three. An absolutely divine blind fine dime and Mason making the shot gets Melbourne in at number seven. No more tricks at number six, just Jarrell Martin important justice from above with a little baseline love. There's just no manual for stopping this Duncan animal. Jarrell ringing the bell gets in at number six. On to number five where Jack McVay just lets it fly. Jack goes behind his back and this shot was always right on track. Give McVay a tray and also give him the number five play. We're up to number four where Keanu Penders getting up off the floor. First, he races past the D with the slalom and then he's all up on him with the southpaw spike in flight. Keanu Pender busting on Justin gets in at number four. At number three, Finn Delaney's like a runaway bull moose on the loose as he drives down the lane to deliver the truth. Man, Finn had options to pass, but he opted to smash as he did just a little hesitation, then all sorts of detonation at number three. On to number two, it's late in the shot clock, it's late in the game, so when Mirko Juric gets the dish from Nate Jawai, he just rises up and lets it fly. Mirko hits the deep tray while standing all the way out on the Kmart K. One of four fourth quarter threes to help lead Cans. To the win gets him in at number two. But at number one, Casper Ware gives this pass a little air and with Xavier Cooks, man, that's not even fair. Hungrier than a great white when he takes flight to light up the night and bring that basketball dynamite. Xavier Cooks, but he also flies and eventually he lands at number one on NBL. Cut it. Well, here's the top ten. Let's get into it all. Thanks to JD Sports, our sneaker of the week. CG, always nice kicks on his feet. <laughs> CG43, so JD sneaker of the week. And look at this. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. oh, hey, hey, hey. That tropical twist collection, Air Jordan 1 <laughs> mid. Available from Thursday, online, on in the store as well. JD-sports.com.au.
I'm out of time. I haven't even got time to do that. Look. <laughs> See ya. Big game. Peace.